The next part in this series deals with Artiscope DRM, which is uh, for Document Rights Management. Uh, Artiscope DRM is quite unique in that to ensure that our documents were secure, we revolutionised um, DRM and removed uh, removed removed those parts that can be manipulated from the user's computer so that DRM management is now always and and always managed by the server uh, and that way we can provide total control for the author and the author can change his settings settings per user per document they can close cancel documents users with immediate effect even on documents that have already been downloaded to the user's computer now Artiscope DRM used to be about a lot of things it used to be about uh, it used to include a content management system for web pages and web page creation and so forth uh, but we have redefined that to simplify it because quite frankly um, it was too much to learn and too much to understand but Artiscope DRM now applies to documents and it's for the management of access rights to documents to prevent onward forwarding and unauthorized distribution. Um, the Artiscope DRM solution is provided to CopySafe PDF licensees for free as a hosted service. It's a free hosted service. Or, or the software can be purchased and installed on your own server. Of course, you will require a Windows server. Um, and we'll have a look at what the portal looks like on the inside. We'll have a look at the uh, control panel. Uh, because what you see there, everything that you see there, is what we provide for you and install on your server, uh, which is portal management pages and the DLL which gets installed server-side to uh, process the commands between your por portal web pages so that from your web pages you can control and manage the software on that's running on the server because uh, CopySafe PDF Protector gets installed to the server and is running server-side to be shared by you and your other staff or, or, or site members And now we'll go over and have a look at uh, the internals to see what what you can do from the inside. In this part, we are going to have a look at the options available in the DRM portal. Now, I have initially logged in here as the main administrator just to show you the various options that, um, uh, that well, if you're using the free service of course you won't see all of these options but these options are available uh, if you purchase the software for example whatever you see here is what we provide when you purchase the DRM software to install on your own server uh, for example, you can, can you have control over the groups. You can create new groups, assign administrators for those groups. Uh, you can send newsletters per group, per individual, and so on. Users, you can assign users, new users. Um, two groups, remove, modify, anything, all sorts of properties about about their rights of access. Uh, there's an option here for quick add. Now here you only you only need to type in their email address and and if 
you want to send them an, uh, a welcome email, leave that box checked. They will login details will be sent automatically by the server, and um, that's that's a quick ad bro process. Uh, while I while I am in this section, there are a couple of inbuilt security options for all administrators, and one here is this one here. ID can be changed by the user or ID change needs admin approval. So with DRM, for each account, a computer is associated and registered for to that account. And the system, system can tell the difference between each computer and only one computer can be associated with an account at any one time. And recently we put this option in by popular demand because we have quite a few uh, quite a few clients who are conducting online courses and they don't want any of their users to share their accounts with other people and so they can use this lock to stop people from changing the computer that's associated to the account and there is that option there's also another option that teachers teachers have in that where are we um, individual users individual users can there's another uh, computer ID change needs admin approval yes yeah, well we just we did see that we just saw that what we need to do is go into groups, that's where it is. Now, when you're editing groups, there's also an option in here for name lock. Now, what name lock? A name lock is applied to groups. For example, if you've got a class which is um, uh, whatever science, you'll have a group named whatever science, and you will. Uh, assign users to that class and where this domain lock comes in is for example we'll go to users for example you see a list of users there now if the user changes their names it can certainly break your familiarity uh, so once those names are set for an account, by applying that lock, they can't. After that, they can't. They can't change change that name, and um, you know, of course, you don't lose track of who is who. Now, in the control panel, other options to the administrator are uh, login statistics. Um, who's logged in where? who's not logging in, uh, bad login, so forth. Um, uh, another option for administrators is the admin option as far as w who, was the, who was the last uh, new update, details changed, that detail, you know, that option and, and, and so forth. I don't really want to show you too much in here because this is actually the administrator options and it can be a little bit too much to let out to uh, somebody who's, who's just downloaded this movie from YouTube but from documents, document management now for example in here if you want to add a new document here you've got the choice of uploading a PDF or the already encrypted file. Now you remember we, we we encrypted some PDF files using the program that was running on our computer. Now should those files have been encrypted for DRM, they can be downloaded. They are, sorry, uploaded here. Uh, after which they they can be then synced into the database. Uh, if it's PDF, you can upload the PDF and let the server side version of the protector. Um, process your documents. Now, having once once you've got those documents uploaded, um, 
for example, with oh, okay, I don't want to actually want to edit that one. Now, these options you apply at the time of upload, and you can you can change the uh, expiry date. You can set the number of views. Uh, this document's been set for five views, after which uh, which means that each user can open this document five times. After that, they they can't open it again. They can print it five times. That could be set to one, or it could be a you know it could be unlimited printing set for one print or whatever. You can set the document to allow remote viewing or not, and you can remove the document from circulation by making it inactive. Um, here, well, okay, that's the title. That's the file. This is the file that was uploaded. Now, this is the group that you have assigned the document to and with assigning access to a document you have a couple of other options we have ebook options which we can look at later or in a minute but for example I could set this document for use by this user, this user and that user in which case the only those three users will be able to open that document and if I set users in this way, it means that what I've said in here will get overridden. So it doesn't matter who or how many other members are, there are in that group, if I use select users, that will override that option. And of course, you know, if I, if I choose a book, uh, choose, choose a group, a group only, that means that all users belonging to that group can access that document. Okay, now this system was recently upgraded and it's really quite sophisticated uh, to include ebooks. Once a document is in the system, oh, I suppose we could have a look at this now, document statistics. Um, this is listing all the documents that. I have uploaded well. Okay, being I'm logged in as the administrator, so I get to see uh, a log of just about everything here. Um, well, these are actually demo accounts, so let's get out of there anyway. Now, so we've got a list of documents and ebooks. Now, the with the ebook option, what happens is that the document's already in the system, and for it to be added as an ebook, there's um, an extra operation. Um, for example, we need some information here it's the category, um, which language it is, summary excerpt, uh, we can upload an image, um, this, this, this one is for free, so, okay, this one's for free, so it's just providing an automatic download link. Now, if this ebook was for sale, what I would then do is, is um, nominate PayPal, and then in here I would put the, my PayPal account, so that when somebody buys the book and downloads it or buys the book online um, it goes through my system and 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 um, so on might just go to the all copy safe users using this DRM portal are entitled to list their books in our ebook store for free. Now here you can you can advertise your ebook, um, advertise it for sale, um, conduct online purchases, and there are no commissions payable to Artiscope. There are no fees charged for hosting on this. Um, site. Uh, this is all part of the service that we are pro now providing to to licensed users of 
copy save PDF. Um, now what I might do now is log out here and, and then come in as as a normal user to show you what type of an what type of an account you might have. Uh, oh, well, hang on. Before we do that, uh, the administrator can also block network access. Um, it's pretty much got got control over everything. They can, they can anything anything that's changed in here has a media effect over um, over the user, the document, the group. Um, whether the document's downloaded onto the user's computer, you have total control from your administration panel. Okay, now I've logged in as one of our users and as you can see there are a few less options. Um, the only users that I can administrate are those that I have added directly myself. Um, any user that I add into the system can be added to uh, my group and um, I can add new groups. I can add new documents and I can create ebooks. I can check on the statistics of my ebooks or my documents. Um, I can check my own. Uh, this is a user that uh, this guy has been playing around with. Um, and these are all of the actions that. Uh, been prescribed to that account. Um, so that's my my list of users, stats, newsletters. I can send out news to send a newsletter from the system. Uh, you first need to have a document because your newsletters are about your documents. And so you go into to send a newsletter. It all starts from your document list. Now we want to send a a notice out to our users that uh, about this particular uh, there's a good one protected ebooks for dummies that's one that we all should be reading now to start your newsletter process click the little envelope um, you've got a couple of options here the email that goes out can send a link for to download the document or you can send the document as an attachment now you can send a test to yourself you can send a test to your group. You might have other groups in here if you've got those. Or you can send it to only select users. Um, you know, you can type your message in here and the rest is pretty much it's, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, documents, ebooks. So, uh, that's your DRM control panel and as I said all of what you see here is what we provide when you purchase the software to install on your server and um, quite frankly it, it, it will all go a lot smoothly a lot quicker if, if you let us if you let us install this for you if you can provide remote access to to the server a remote desktop connection we can have this system on your server ready to go and and customized for your own preferences because you know um, not everybody wants the same permissions applied in the same group um, policies and so forth so there's always a little bit of tweaking to uh, to make it you know more more suitable for what, what your requirements are.